Now let's take a look at uh, tool workflow. Because of Houdini's procedural nature, uh, there are some things that happen a little differently. So we're going to uh, take a look at that. So first we select a bunch of faces. Uh, and then we're going to press the C key and go up and use a tool, the Poly Extrude tool. So we have used a tool to act on some geometry. And now we'll adjust some things, just create a little bit of an inset there. So what we want to do is say, what, what just happened? Well, if you look at the Poly Extrude, you'll see that each polygon has a number, and those numbers are used to determine what gets extruded. So if I change the number from 37 to 36, I get an extra Poly Extrude there, and if I change that to 44, I get an extra one there. So that number becomes very important. Now, if I go back to the original grid, which is a 10 by 10 grid, and I start playing around by adding more columns, you'll see that the Poly Extrudes move around uh, because they stay with the numbers that were originally assigned. So this makes things, you know, if you want to be fully procedural, uh, this makes it hard because you can't make those changes up the chain um, if you've got a fixed group like that. Now you can reselect, so I can add to that, uh, or if I wanted to, I could just say, no, no, pick these ones here and press enter. So certainly from a modeling point of view, you can always go back and, and use the proceduralism to, to change it. But you might want it to be doing it a little more automatically, like so you don't have to worry about it. So one of the approaches here is to insert a group node in between and we'll call that input underscore group. And group nodes can do a little bit more than just the group field uh, here. So by default, the group is inputting everything. So it's it's actually got all of the, the, the polygons. So we could, just like we did before, we could come into here and, and pick a polygon. You know, let's pick 35, and there it is. Um, so we could do it that way. The other approach is to not do that, but to say, let's use a different method like bounding uh, regions. So in this case here, uh, we can have the tool work on any polygon that is within the bounding region. So we can expand that region out, and as soon as it encom encompasses a polygon, um, or a, a face rather, it will get extruded. And so what's nice about this is you can go back to the original grid and start making changes, and as you do, you're more or less getting the poly extrudes in the same place where you originally intended because you've, you've been able to define that. You can expand it and, or contract it later, but it, it sort of keeps your extrusions in the same area. So that's one way of being sort of more procedural about it uh, that's worth exploring. Now, another way is to do something called uh, group uh, by range. So again, if we plug that in, now it's not going to work at first because get a little error because it's we need to change that to input group. Now we are extruding everything. But we could, with this option here, say, well, let's do one of three, one of two, um, and get a sort of pattern out of that. So this gives us a lot more flexibility uh, when doing this kind of thing. And it's that group name that's in the poly extrude that allows that to happen. So anytime you're feeding something with input group, you get that. So let's take uh, alt drag the original grid and uh, color nodes, and we're going to uh, continue to explore possibilities here. Let's press A with edge selection and go around and select those edges. Um, we had to press three to get edge selection. Now C will allow us to go up and go poly, poly bevel, and then we'll sort of bevel those edges there. And there you go. So again, um, you know, there's a group here, uh, and it's the same kind of thing that we had before. So what we might want to do is do it, maybe if we want to do edges, there's well, certainly we should use a 3D object for that. I think it better illustrates that possibility. So in this case here, we're going to, uh, let's alt drag over the color, uh, and we've got a little box here. And we're going to change its size to, let's say, 5 to 5. And we're going to change the axis divisions to 3 to 3. Or, eh, you know, a little bit more might make more sense. 4 to 4. So now, if we want to poly bevel the edges of this, um, 
we need a way of finding the edges, the corner edges, the 90 degree angle edges. And so one way to do this is to, is again using the group node because it has some uh, functionality to allow this. And then that would allow us to create a much better, uh, more flexible result. So we go group and with this group, we're gonna go edges. We're gonna call it edge group, not original, but uh, we're gonna turn off the base group and we're gonna use another thing called include by edges. And so we can use an angle to determine. So we can go from an angle of 89 to 91, uh, which will cover the right angle. Now let's alt drag over the poly bevel, feed that in. Now, initially, um, <clears throat> if we delete that, it's going to be beveling everything. Now you can, can't really see it. Let's go in and reduce that down. Yeah, you can. When you go down, you'll see that every edge is being beveled. And we don't want that. We only want the ones at the right angle. So we're going to do use the edge group. And voila, there we go. We've got focused on the 90 degree angles. So now we can add a little more division there. And you can see that is what we've got. And even if we go up to the top here and we add um, some topology to that, uh, it will still follow the rules and give us the edges that we need. So this has hopefully helped you understand a little bit about how tools uh, work in Houdini um, and, you know, and that you can begin to layer these things. So here we have a poly extrude at the top of this and we can go one step further by putting a group in here. Now the poly extrude wanted something called input group uh, and we can use an option on here. We don't want everything. Uh, we want to use the normals and we want to put everything that's pointed up. So one, zero, and then a spread of zero. And now we got that working up there. So if you begin to understand how these groups can be used, you can start creating extremely procedural solutions um, using Houdini uh, and its node nodes. Thank you.